everybody. This is Elisa. I'm back. We're talking about the male reproductive system. And this time we're going to go over the seminal vesicles in the prostate and how they contribute to the production of semen. Let's get started. So these are referred to as the accessory glands. Um, so there's three sets of them. So seminal vesicles, the prostate, as well as the bulbourethral glands. So let's take a look. So um, these three sets, seminal vesicles. So there's a couple of them posterior to the bladder, right? So they're um, kind of the first stop on the nascent sperm's journey on its way out of the body and into um, the production of semen. So this is quite a bit of semen is produced by the seminal vesicles, right? Like hence the name. Um, and this is going to kind of be mixing with uh, the sperm and that 60% of the semen into the ejaculatory duct. So it's going to continue on actually and go to the prostate. And the prostate surrounds, so here's like the bladder, here's the prostate, and then here's the urethra coming through, right? And so we're going to be kind of meeting here. So a uh, prostate gland is going to surround it and the ejaculatory duct just after the bladder, or just inferior to the bladder, my bad. I'm sorry about that. So it's 30 to 50 compound tuber isoner glands. And so they're going to empty out through like pores, right? So they actually push out through a pore system uh, in the prostatic urethra. And so this is a like 30% of the semen, and this is what gives it like a milkier appearance, like a whiter appearance. Finally, the bulbourethral glands right here. So these are actually near the bulb of the penis a little bit more further down. So what happens is this is actually something that during sexual arousal, which can be um, either a conscious or a um, reflex arousal. Uh, so like a non-elective. So they produce clear and like make a more slippery fluid. So this is what's going to come out before the actual ejaculate proper. And so this is a pre-ejaculate and this is going to lubricate that tube. It's going to, uh, the urethra, um, and it's going to help prepare for intercourse. It's not a lot, but it's there. Um, it's also helping to protect the sperm by uh, working on the acidity of any or like leftover components of urine or in some cases some bacteria that may be there in the urethra so it kind of like pushes that out. Let's talk about something that's really important and that's going to be the prostate diseases. So the prostate itself here's the bladder here's like the urethra and the prostate surrounds the urethra. Okay so it has a lot of control over a couple of systems like number one the urinary system which is incredibly important for maintaining homeostatic balance uh, and then number two of course the reproductive system as well I mean everything other than that that that's going to impact so um, something that's important it's in really learn about is the enlargement of the prostate so the thing is is it's super common so they have 80% uh, of men over 70 and they say like uh, on a long enough timeline 100% of all males will eventually experience this. So um, it's just, it's something to very closely monitor. It compresses the urethra, right? It squishes it down and makes it hard to urinate, um, which can be problematic for like the kidneys and the blood flow and, and like a lot of other systems. It can promote things like kidney infections, bladder infections, um, it can go unreported because not everyone will go and see the doctor when they're having issues urinating or they think it's normal or whatnot instead of getting it kind of treated because the truth is we are living a lot longer than we were supposed to. Um, it's more common in individuals who just have more body mass uh, or do not exercise or uh, consume a lot of alcohol so that they have more degeneration, especially kidney disorders. Prostate cancer is incredibly common. So it is the second most common cancer in men after lung cancer. If it is caught early, it is very treatable. So please, please, please get in and get that checked, right? So and encourage people to do so. Um, tumors can be near the periphery of the gland where they don't actually obstruct the urine flow. So they need to be otherwise assessed, physically assessed, and they can go unnoticed until they actually kind of are causing discomfort or pain. Um, and some people won't even go in because of the pain, so that's unfortunate. They metastasize to nearby lymph nodes, which is really going to help spread that cancer fast and then again to the lungs, other organs, rapidly, rapidly. 
A digital rectal exam. Digital because of fingers, rectal because it's the rectum, and an exam because that's what you're doing. You're examining. So, like, um, you... Let me see if I could draw. Oh, that's terrible. Let's draw this one. Okay. All right. Bladder, right? And then here's, like, rectum right here. And then, like, let's say here is urethra going out here and then here's the prostate. So there is an exam where inserting the fingers, gloved fingers, come on, uh, into the rectum can really feel around and get an idea of that texture and the health and the size of that prostate. So very important to have that done um, and just encourage people to get those regular digital rectal exams, very important. So diagnosed from elevated levels also of um, some serine protease. Uh, as well as acid phosphatase in the blood, but not always exclusively. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to go over that. Very important stuff. Um, you know, we talk a lot about men's health and women's health, but some of the things that we don't always talk about is the fact that people uh, sometimes just don't want to talk about their health. So please encourage uh, people to get properly examined and on a regular basis, save a life. Okay, I hope you're out there somewhere. Having a great day. Bye-bye.